You were such a useless daughter-in-law. My father-in-law sneered as he threw a bag at me. Finally got rid of that parasite clinging to my son. My mother-in-law joined in, shoving me out the front door. Stop, please. I screamed, but they continued to mock me without mercy. Get out of here now. Yeah, you ungrateful wretch. They laughed at me, hurling cruel words while looking down on me with contempt. After enduring their abuse for three years, I finally decided to get a divorce. Throughout those years, my in-laws had thrown countless heartless remarks my way. On top of that, my mother-in-law even dared to lay hands on her own grandson, my son, without hesitation. She crossed a line that should never be crossed. And for that, I can never forgive her. I'm leaving with my son. I was determined as I said that over the phone to someone. Not even 10 minutes later, a car pulled up in front of the house. Seeing the car, my in-laws suddenly started trembling with fear. Yes, the person who came for me turned the tables and our roles were reversed. My name is Emma Anderson, a 35-year-old working mom. I currently live with my in-laws and my son in their house. My husband, Rick, works in sales and frequently gets transferred, and my father-in-law is a company employee nearing retirement. My mother-in-law is a housewife, and we split the household chores. My son, John, is about to start elementary school, and I've been busy with all the preparations. Actually, it was my in-laws who suggested we live together. You know, we're on a tight budget, so living together would help save on living expenses. Please consider moving in with us. My mother-in-law begged us three years ago, but honestly, I wasn't too keen on the idea of living with them. Because, you see, my in-laws have serious personality issues. My father-in-law is always condescending, looking down on everyone with his overbearing behavior while my mother-in-law is selfish and always says whatever she pleases. I knew that living with them would be tough. Even so, in the end, we accepted living with my in-laws. The reason was that their current house was a rental property that had to be returned in five years, and my in-laws were planning to move into a retirement home. Since the cohabitation was temporary, we figured it wouldn't be an issue for a short time. Plus, both my in-laws and we were saving up us for a house and them for the retirement home, so splitting the living expenses by living together was mutually beneficial. Rick, my husband, always stood up for me and protected me from their harsh words. Whenever my mother-in-law or father-in-law said something rude, Rick would firmly put them in their place. If anything happens, let me know right away. Rick would always say that, showing his concern for me. And he never compromised when it came to dealing with his parents. Because of that, my in-laws were always on their best behavior in front of Rick, never making snide comments or saying anything mean to me. However, just as John started elementary school, Rick got assigned to work away from home. Adjusting to the new routine was already hectic, and now we had to face the huge change of Rick not being around. Rick initially planned to take me and John with him. But the company housing was only for singles. And since John had just started school, Rick reluctantly had to go alone. I'm worried about leaving you two behind. I can't stop thinking about what mom and dad might do when I'm not there. Yeah. I'm worried too, but I'll manage for John's sake. I'll contact you immediately if anything happens. All right, and remember, you've got people nearby you can rely on, so don't hesitate to reach out to them. Moved by Rick's serious words, I nodded firmly. And so, Rick left for his assignment, and my life with John and my in-laws began without him. As we feared, the moment Rick left, my in-laws started to intensify their harassment towards me. Don't think you can slack off on the chores just because Rick isn't here. 
My mother-in-law barged into my home office every day saying things like that. Actually, I work from home as a web writer. Before getting married, I worked at a small publishing company, but I had to quit when I got pregnant with John right after we got married. At that time, my boss suggested that I start a blog from home. It might not yield results immediately, but it'll be useful in the future. Following my boss's advice, I started the blog, which eventually began connecting me with various opportunities. Thankfully, I now receive a steady stream of work requests, keeping me busy with deadlines every day. However, my in-laws don't understand the concept of working from home. They think I'm just playing around on the computer and use that as an excuse to harass me. How many times do I have to tell you to stop playing on the computer? Get the chores done. My mother-in-law would say this harshly, then suddenly kick the chair from behind, causing my body to sway unsteadily. I let out a short cry and quickly stood up. I've explained this so many times, Mom. This is work. I said that firmly, but my mother-in-law just snorted and began to mock me. Don't lie. There's no such thing as a job you can do from home. Seeing that reasoning with her was hopeless, I sighed deeply. Perhaps my sigh annoyed her, as she then launched into another loud lecture. But really, it was more like a stream of insults than a lecture. Every day, my mother-in-law berates me until she feels satisfied. When Rick was here, he would patiently explain my work to my in-laws and defend me. But now, my supportive husband who understood my work is gone. I have to handle this on my own. Waiting for a pause in her tirade, I apologized. Admitting fault was the only way to appease her. As long as you understand. Now hurry up and prepare lunch. With that, she left my office. I sighed quietly. The only reason I can endure this harassment is that our time living together is limited. Once we've saved enough money, we'll move out of here as soon as possible. Comforting myself with that thought, I headed to the kitchen. I need to make lunch quickly and catch up on the work I've fallen behind on this afternoon. Just as I was thinking that, more trouble came my way. After lunch, as I was cleaning up and then returning to my work in my room, I suddenly heard footsteps and the door to my office was abruptly opened without so much as a knock. Here it is. Please come in. Startled by my mother-in-law's unusually cheerful voice, I turned around quickly. Standing there was my mother-in-law and a young man in what looked like work clothes. Ah, uh, what is this? Ignoring my question, my mother-in-law pointed at my computer and said brightly to the young man, That's the computer we don't need. How much can we get for it? I looked at the young man. He seemed bewildered. Um, I'm sorry. I was told over the phone that I'd be picking up an old computer you no longer use. It finally dawned on me what was happening. I'm sorry, but there's no computer here that we need to get rid of. When I said that, the young man quickly apologized. I then ushered them both out of the office and guided the service worker to the front door. But as soon as we were alone, my mother-in-law, her face flushed with anger, started yelling at me. Hey, don't interfere. Startled by her sudden change in attitude, the young man quickly bolted outside. Once it was just the two of us, she came at me, yelling furiously, trying to grab me. I dodged her, sharply demanding an explanation for her behavior. Mom, what's going on? Explain yourself. She glared at me and finally responded. I figured since you're just fooling around, I might as well sell it. When I got a call from the removal service, I thought it was the perfect opportunity. With that, she stormed off to her room. The door slammed shut right in front of me. I collapsed onto the floor, utterly shocked. I never imagined I would be treated like this. 
I sat there in a daze for a while, but eventually I pulled myself together and headed to my office. I dialed Rick's number. Even though he was at work, he picked up right away. What's wrong? Did something happen? Hearing the gentle concern in his voice, I started SOB. I want to leave this house as soon as possible. I whispered, and Rick drew in a sharp breath. After I calmed down, I explained everything that had just happened. Rick's voice turned stern as he replied, Got it. I'll be back this weekend, and I'll have a serious talk with Mom. Yes, please do. I said that weakly, and Rick softly added, Let's save up for our own home as fast as we can. I nodded and replied, Yes. Determined to work even harder. True to his word, Rick gave his mother a stern talking to. Even though she usually had plenty of excuses, she seemed genuinely frightened by Rick's intensity this time and promised never to do it again. But I couldn't shake the bitter expression on my father-in-law's face as he silently watched the exchange. Some time passed after that day. My mother-in-law had been much quieter since then, allowing me to focus more on my work than ever before. One evening, while the four of us were having dinner, my mother-in-law suddenly said something strange. I made $100,000 trading Forex. Isn't that amazing? She proudly showed us the screen of her smartphone. I stared in disbelief. Apparently, she had been dabbling in Forex trading without telling anyone. Though she had made a profit, I found out that she had used the money they'd saved for their retirement home as her initial investment. I couldn't help but look at her with a strained expression. Mom, did you take some kind of course or something? But she just shook her head dramatically and grinned. Nope, it's all about instinct. Everyone says so. It turns out that smartphone forex trading is currently popular among her friends. Jealous of her friends showing off their designer bags, she decided to try it herself. Since she was already pretty tech savvy, she had no trouble diving into forex trading. I was stunned by her bold move, but also deeply worried about her approach. Mom, I don't mean to interfere, but I really think you should study up on it. She scowled at me, clearly displeased. Why should I listen to you? But if you don't set clear rules, you could end up losing a lot. I gently warned, but she snorted in disdain, mocking me. Are you just jealous because I made money? That's typical of poor people. My mother-in-law ignored my words and continued to look down on me. And with full confidence, she insisted that she could make even more money. Worried, I called Rick and told him what happened. Mom doesn't know what she's doing with Forex. She's just winging it, and it's only a matter of time before something goes terribly wrong. Rick shared my concerns and repeatedly tried to convince his mother to stop trading Forex over the phone. I also urged her to quit many times, but she stubbornly refused to listen. To make matters worse, my father-in-law began to support her, scolding me for opposing their decisions. How dare you, as our daughter-in-law, not show respect for your elders? You, exclaimed, a mere daughter-in-law have no right to tell us what to do. He shouted at me, his face flushed with anger. His loud voice made me freeze, unable to respond. Hearing his grandfather yell, John started crying beside me. I realized that saying anything more would be pointless and fell silent. I took John to the bedroom, soothing him gently until he fell asleep. Meanwhile, my in-laws, taking advantage of my silence, became even more obsessed with Forex. Soon, they started becoming stingy with the household expenses. Eventually, they even began asking Rick for money over the phone. Hey, Rick, we'll definitely make a profit and pay you back. So could you lend us some money? 
My mother-in-law would ask sweetly, trying to coax money out of Rick. This infuriated Rick, and he firmly refused. I have a responsibility to support Emma and John. There's no way I can give you money. Besides, Emma warned you to stop, but you didn't listen. Shut up. As a son, you should give money to your parents. Every phone call turned into a heated argument between Rick and my father-in-law. I found their conversations terrifying. Then the inevitable happened. My mother-in-law's luck and instincts ran out in her forex trading. Like a car careening downhill, they started losing money, and their profits dwindled away. As their losses mounted, they began to blame me, calling me a parasite and a curse. Why are you, a stay-at-home wife, eating comfortably here? That's right. Because you're leeching off Rick's earnings, he won't help us. Their gazes toward me were filled with near hatred. No matter how much I explained that I was working from home, they no longer seemed to see it that way. My mother-in-law, desperate to recover her losses, threw herself even deeper into Forex. She became so engrossed in staring at her smartphone that she stopped doing any housework, leaving all the chores to me. She would stay in her room all day clutching her phone tightly, desperately watching the trading screen. Sometimes, I'd hear loud shouts and curses from her room, which made me even more fearful of her. But worse was yet to come. My in-laws began to exhibit strange behavior. One day, while I was in my office working, I heard my mother-in-law call to me in an unusually sweet tone from outside. Her kind voice, Something I hadn't heard in a while made me uneasy, but I cautiously opened the door. There she was, with a faint smile, asking for a favor. I'm thinking of getting rid of your father's books from his study. I can't carry them all by myself, so could you help me? The overly polite way she asked made me feel a strange sense of unease. But I sensed that refusing might provoke something worse. Sensing that vibe from my mother-in-law, I quietly nodded in agreement. I stepped into my father-in-law's study, which was across from my office. My mother-in-law handed me a stack of books, far too many to carry, and urged me to take them down the stairs. The stairs in their house were steep, and I felt like I might fall at any moment. Just then, my mother-in-law exclaimed, Oh! Startled by her voice, I lost my grip and dropped the books I was carrying. As I stumbled and leaned against the wall for support, the heavy books tumbled down the stairs. The thought of those books hitting my back sent a chill down my spine. At that moment, I distinctly heard my mother-in-law click her tongue. I thought, huh? And instinctively looked up at my mother-in-law. From the top of the stairs, my mother-in-law was staring down at me intently. A cold sweat broke out on my back. Could she have dropped the books on purpose? I didn't want to believe that my mother-in-law could do something so terrifying. My heart raced. I couldn't take my eyes off her. Then, in an overly concerned voice, she asked, Are you okay? I replied with a hoarse, yes my voice barely audible. A few days later, during dinner, my mother-in-law casually brought up the topic of insurance. By the way, I reviewed your father's insurance recently. The terms are quite different from what they used to be. I'm thinking of updating mine too. My father-in-law nodded and, as if it was nothing, asked me. Speaking of which, Emma, what kind of insurance do you have? You're young, so I'm sure you've got a solid policy with good coverage, right? They asked in a light, conversational tone, but their eyes were gleaming with interest. Feeling uneasy, I mumbled, Well, yes, sort of, evading their question. Their words made me feel almost certain. Maybe my in-laws wanted me gone. 
If I left this house, they might think that all of Rick's earnings would go to them. Could they be asking about my insurance because they're after my policy? I shook my head to dispel the thought. Maybe I'm just overthinking it. There's no way they'd actually try to harm me. I tried to convince myself, but the memory of the incident on the stairs suddenly flashed through my mind. What if that was intentional? But I didn't have any solid proof. Of course, I discussed all of this with Rick over the phone. It's true, without evidence, we can't go to the police. Rick said that with frustration in his voice. But I feel like I'm in danger. That's when Rick made a suggestion. I found the idea reasonable and agreed to Rick's suggestion. And so, we quietly devised a plan. A few days later, on a weekend, something drastic happened. My mother-in-law hurt John. Lately, John had been spending a lot of time in the bedroom reading on weekends. He probably felt safe because I was working in the next room. Since starting elementary school, John had almost completely avoided any interaction with his grandparents. It seemed like he was scared of how they had been acting lately. And who could blame him? They had scared him multiple times by yelling loudly in front of him and otherwise showed no interest in their grandson. I felt reassured knowing John was in the bedroom, so I focused on my work. Suddenly, I heard John's voice. Stop it. Grandma, stop it. The urgency in his voice made me rush to the bedroom. What's wrong, John? What happened? Just then, I heard a sharp slap and the sound of something hitting the floor. When I burst into the room, I found John lying on the floor, crying hysterically. His left cheek was swollen and bright red. Did you hit John? I screamed in a frenzy, holding John tightly and glaring fiercely at my mother-in-law. But she flew into a rage and started hurling insults at me. It's because of your poor parenting that John is acting so defiant. This is your fault. She didn't feel the least bit guilty about hitting her grandson. Instead, she used it as a reason to attack me. Seeing her like that was the last straw. The last bit of patience I had snapped with a loud crack. I can't take this anymore. I'm leaving this house and I'm divorcing Rick. I yelled, glaring straight at her. In the next moment, John, still in my arms, handed me something as tears streamed down his face. It was a passbook containing the money Rick and I had been saving for our own home. So, my mother-in-law had come into the bedroom to steal this. And did John realize what was happening? Confront my mother-in-law and take the passbook back from her? And did my mother-in-law, enraged by this, slap my son? As anger boiled inside me, my mother-in-law, pleased that I said I was leaving, hurriedly shoved something into my hands. I've been waiting for you to say that. Sign this and get out. What she handed me was a divorce paper with Rick's name already filled in. With trembling hands, I took it and wrote my name. Watching me, my mother-in-law spoke with a triumphant smile. I had Rick sign this the last time he was here. Rick was sick of you too, you know. He hated having to support someone who doesn't work. They both ganged up on me saying, he absolutely hates having to support someone who doesn't work. I bit my lip as I finished filling out the divorce paper. My mother-in-law snatched it from me, grinning wickedly as she said with satisfaction. I'll take care of this for you. Now you're a stranger to us. That's right. Hurry up and get out. Now that the freeloader is gone, we can put more money into Forex. Laughing loudly, they began throwing my belongings out of the house. You were such a useless daughter-in-law. My father-in-law said that as he threw a bag at me. We can finally get rid of the parasite attached to my son. My mother-in-law joined in, shoving me out the front door. Stop, please. 
I shouted, but they continued to mock me without mercy. Get out of here now. Yeah, you ungrateful wretch. They laughed at me, hurling cruel words while looking down on me with contempt. After three years of enduring their abuse, I finally decided to get a divorce. Over those years, my in-laws had thrown countless heartless remarks my way. On top of that, my mother-in-law didn't hesitate to lay hands on my son, John, her own grandson. My mother-in-law crossed a line that should never be crossed. I can never forgive my mother-in-law for that. I'm leaving with John. I said that as I called someone on the phone. Not even 10 minutes later, a car pulled up in front of the house. Seeing the car, my in-laws suddenly began trembling in fear. Why is that car here? My father-in-law muttered as someone stepped out of the back seat. Oh, sorry to startle you. I rushed over as soon as my daughter called. It was my father. And the car he arrived in was from the parent company of the company where my father-in-law worked. Rick and I had been secretly consulting my father about the situation with my in-laws, so he was ready to act if anything happened. That's why he came as soon as I called. My father is actually a high-ranking executive at the parent company where my father-in-law works. But since my father-in-law was not in a position that involved external relations, he didn't know about my father. On the other hand, my father knew all about him from what Rick and I had told him. However, since my father-in-law was a proud man who didn't like family meddling in his work, Rick, my father, and I had all kept this information to ourselves until now. My father addressed my stunned father-in-law in a stern tone. I've heard everything from my daughter. I'm aware that you've become deeply involved in Forex trading, and I've decided I won't tolerate people who would harm their own family for it. My in-laws, shocked by his words, began to open their mouths to argue. But my father silenced them with a sharp look and added, I can't trust a company that employs someone like you. I've been lenient because it's the company where my son-in-law's father works, but that ends now. My father-in-law, panicking, tried to plead with him. Wait, wait. This is. It's all a misunderstanding. Yes, that's right. We're family, after all. Emma, please, tell your father. Come on, Emma John, let's go. Turning my back on my in-laws, who were desperately trying to defend themselves, my father urged me to get into the car. And so, my father took me back to my childhood home. Afterward, Rick and I got divorced. During our final discussion, my in-laws yelled at my father. We're going to be richer than you with our forex trading. In response, I coldly said to them, You'll be paying us the full alimony and returning all the money you squandered from our savings. Even after hearing this, my in-laws continued to act defiantly, but Rick and I exchanged knowing smiles, understanding what was to come. Six months later, I received a frantic phone call from my in-laws. Hey, Rick quit his job. He's missing. Do you know anything about this? Really? I don't know anything about it. When I responded so indifferently, my in-laws on the other end of the line started panicking and causing a commotion. Apparently, they had lost all their retirement savings in reckless forex trading. Desperate to recoup their losses, they had taken on high-risk trades, which only worsened their situation. Overwhelmed by the pressure of working in the same company as my father, whom he had always looked down on, my father-in-law had taken early retirement. And to make matters worse, he had lost his entire retirement payout in Forex as well. In desperation, my in-laws had tried to rely on Rick to get back on their feet. But when they called his number, it had already been disconnected. Rick had vanished without a trace. Is that so? But it's not really my concern anymore since we're divorced. Good luck with that.
I responded to them, treating their distress as none of my business. Suddenly, my mother-in-law blurted out something absurd. If you find Rick, I'll let you remarry him. I couldn't help but laugh at her and responded, I'm afraid that won't be possible. I am already remarried. The moment she heard this, she started shouting something, but I hung up the phone without a second thought. As I let out a long breath, Rick, now my husband again, spoke to me. Well done, Emma. I turned to Rick with a bright smile. Rick, too, had cut ties with his parents, deciding to distance himself from them entirely. That's why we divorced temporarily and then remarried, with Rick taking my family name. Are you sure you're okay with this? Yes. My family is you and John. I can never forgive those people for hurting the two of you. Rick replied, holding my hand tightly. With the alimony we secured from my in-laws, we purchased a home near my parents' house. As it turned out, my in-laws, overwhelmed by debt, had to rely on relatives to bail them out. In exchange, they are now working their old bodies hard on a farm in the countryside, where they had been sent by those relatives. We learned about this when those relatives contacted Rick later on. Rick informed them about our remarriage, but asked them not to tell his parents. The only time I'll see them again is at their funeral. Rick decided that, and I fully agreed with him.